Hello, uh, my name is Trent Kraus, and today I will be discussing directing in theater uh, and the history of it, the director's roles uh, from the very beginning to uh, modern theater and all in between. Uh, to start, we have the overview um, of the director's roles. So the director uh, plays a very important role uh, in theater. He or she um, basically tells uh, then directs everyone what to do, where to go. Uh, they oversee all the operations and kind of play a role like the the boss of a, of a company would. Um, and they're they're in charge of taking the play uh, that was on paper and just the script of it and really just bringing it to life and making it more than just uh, just something that you can read, making it something you can watch and experience and listen to, uh, and much more. So some of the roles of the director include casting. So casting by way of actually picking the the cast and the people for the roles of the uh, the play, the play itself. Um, so they uh, have auditions and they're the ones who select the roles, uh, whether that be people who uh, are actually in the play or outside perspectives like the costumes or sound design, uh, designers which brings me to my next point uh, alongside the the designers the sound lighting and costume designers they work uh, very closely with them kind of being the the one who, who makes those major decisions uh, to help out the sound lighting costume designs uh, again to bring really just bring the play to life um, so the, uh, they also just like I said in the last slide, they direct the actors and the crew uh, to perform, perform their roles. Um, they they kind of run the operation completely um, and just tell everyone what to do. They have, Each person has their individual position uh, designated to them, assigned by the director, and the director, uh, him or herself, uh, kind of just shows them around, shows them what to do. Um, another couple things is the, the specific scenes themselves, uh, whether it be breakdowns or run-throughs, um, the the director perform or will will set up the scene breakdown. So run everyone through the scenes, uh, help everyone understand what they're going to be working with, and then once they have an understanding, they'll do rundowns and start practicing the scenes and, until they they have it down perfectly and can perform in full. Uh, a little bit of history of directing. Uh, this, so the director has always been a part of theater, but the position itself, director, has not always been a thing. It's more, um, it hasn't been an, an official title, I guess, uh, and since until the late 1800s. Um, so the, the role director was played by uh, either the playwright or the stage manager um, in ancient theater and uh, the, those, those people would, would have very similar roles and responsibilities as a director, but they didn't have the official title of director. And the first known official director was uh, for a German acting group called uh, Meinigen Players, which started in 1874, and the director was Ludwig Schronick. Um, Ludwig Schronick and his, the rest of his crew, the rest of his team, all worked together very closely Lud uh, Ludwig was the director, but um, everyone worked together, uh, so Ludwig didn't have as many responsibilities as a modern day director might have, uh, as as more people were uh, individually kind of understanding their own roles. Um, and by 1890, the official title position director started to gain a lot of traction in the theater world, and a lot of uh, mo most uh, plays and theater performances had an official director. Uh, to continue on to that, the first known female director was Lillian Trimble Bradley. Uh, she started directing in the early 20th century, um, and she, some of the plays that she directed were Keep It To Yourself and The Crimson Alibi. Uh, she was the first female uh, theater director. Uh, in the 1950s, the, the roles of directors started to expand past basic operations. It wasn't just kind of the cliche, you know, what you'd imagine of a director, just, all right, you do this, you do that. They they really uh, expanded and, and took over many more responsibilities, as in directing people where to go, what to do, 
as well as uh, the casting and uh, being kind of like the lead of the, the operations when it comes to the the uh, the scenes themselves, um, scenic costume lighting design as I stated earlier. Um, and in today's theater, you will not see uh, a performance that does not have a director uh, to discuss some of the, the bigger, I guess, directors in history. Um, one from the past, Orson Welles, who is commonly known for his presence in movies and, and radio, but uh, lesser known, is known for directing. He's directed many, um, many theatrical performances as well as movies, but uh, he has a very... Uh, great resume when it comes to theatrical uh, directing. So he was, um, his mother and father both passed away at a very young age um, and he struggled with that and one way he coped was theater. So he attended the Art Institute of Chicago and joined the Federal Theater Project in 1935 and some of the plays that he directed is Macbeth by Shakespeare and The Cradle Will Rock by Mark, Mark Blitzstein. Uh, another more modern director, Casey Nicola. Um, he, as well, he started in uh, as an actor and then a chore choreographer and eventually worked his way up to directors. He is one of the, the best modern day theatrical directors. Um, he attended UCLA in California. He started off his career, uh, as I stated earlier, as an actor and choreographer. And today he is uh, directing now um, and some of his most famous plays include To Be or Not To Be and Spamalot. Uh, thank you for listening.